Well, it's that time of year, in other words, the, the end of the year. End up with it. This is the thing I got. Oh, by the way, this is a t shirt I got in the world in 1992. And it's uh, women's, women's radio. It's a pro, it was a project, I think they were in, in uh, project that was in Costa Rica or something like that. That's part of this organization called uh, International Association of Community Broadcasters and um, a bunch of other things because I'm a radio man. Anyway, forget that, but I forget that, but it's, uh, I guess this still exists. It's one of my favorite t shirts. It looks sort of new because I never wear my favorite t shirts. I had it since 1992. But uh, it's the end of the year, and um, there's this magazine that's out in Africa called uh, New African Woman. This is the uh, new, uh, new African Woman Year End, that would be 2016 uh, edition. Uh, the editor is someone named uh, Gina Jane Gier. Um, it's over here, Gina Jane And uh, I get this magazine. Um, it, it's a funny thing about at least South Africa, we where I am in South Africa. You know, I would subscribe to it and have it delivered to my mailbox and like that, but you know, things go missing and stuff like that and get destroyed. So, what I actually do is um, there's a shop called Lilliput, um, and uh, Nazuko was the uh, she's the uh, proprietor of that shop. And uh, so I go to, it's a little stationary shop, and they have little pens and, you know, greeting cards, whatever have you. But, um, and then you can also get this magazine, of course, in big stores. But I always go to Nizuko to get it because, you know, I want to support her shop and, you know, supporting a woman, like that kind of thing. But I get it for my wife because she's a, she's a designer. She's a, she's a, she's a designer. She's a fashion designer. She made this hat and a bunch of other things. Anyway, so, um, uh, so I haven't given her this copy yet, she doesn't know about this, you know, um, uh, but I, I, did, I just went in there, let me, let me just go through this magazine and take this off so I can read a little bit. Uh, of course they have uh, uh, Fadumo uh, Dayibi, I don't know how to pronounce her name, uh, she's from Somalia, so the feature is on her, and uh, this, is, this is her, you know, she actually looks like a sister. Uh, I used to hang out with and uh, when I was in my, my college days. Anyway, there's an interview on her and uh, uh, she, whew, she's the first ever female presidential candidate in upcoming Somalian elections. I don't know when the elections were. So they have this extensive interview where there's a things, you know. Do you think that this will discourage women from becoming as daring as you? Uh, I guess it's talking about the patriarchy. Um, and what her answer is, so, no, I don't, uh, I don't look at it that way. What I see is that we in the women's movement are focusing on the wrong group. We always tend to focus on seeing men as our enemies. We need to instead to convince them, empower them, and make them understand why they should be on a woman's side. That's very good. Uh, women who feel that uh, like that is not my place. Uh, to be in leadership, I should be at home, and that's what people usually think about that kind of thing. So she's so she has an extensive interview with her, and her pictures and stuff like that. And um, well, this this is it. How old are your children? How many do you have? Have you got? To, you know, you guys have four. And my oldest is twenty. I have an eighteen-year-old daughter. I have a daughter who was eleven years old, and the youngest is nine years old. And then the, the interviewer, I guess, is the uh, uh, Gina and Jerry. Ask, uh, do they understand what their mom is doing and risking? When they say mom, you know they were educated in the in the UK. Um, anyway, uh, they understand that they also uh, they understand and uh, they also understand that they are servants. And if anything should happen to their mother, they will have to pick up the fight, and they will continue to fight unless change can come. Wow, that's good. I like that. So anyway, so that's just an interview, and then, then, then of course, uh, for whatever reason, they have Michelle Obama, which gets to sell the magazines, I guess it's on the front too. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, Z tribute to Michelle Obama. And I, I, I mean, you know, Michelle Obama came in, you know, everybody would say, man, that's the strength behind, behind, you know, Brother President Barack Obama. 
And you know, I have no qualms with that. But my only thing about Michelle Obama, things that she does fine, you know, with her mom, I, well, all the stuff she does fine. But I have this nagging thing every time I see her, like, I would hope, I would really, really hope. Okay. There she is right there. You know, she has the fashion thing like that. But I would really hope, just before she leaves office, just do me one favor. Uh, by me, I mean, you know, women one favor. And that would be either to wear a, a, a gale, you know, uh, I guess we call them dookie in South Africa, you know, head wrap, African, you know, material head wrap. Um, at least wear, wear, wear that. I don't know if, but I don't follow that much. Maybe she has done that. Uh, and, 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 and take the chemicals out the hair, you know, go natural just for the last, I don't know, the last, I guess it's less than a month, less, less than a month, 20 days, whatever, the last, the last, well, I won't get it to talk. So, so she's in there. But then this issue uh, goes on, and they're talking about saying in the wrong shifting world, then editorial. Uh, this uh, uh, Zanib Jet. Jameth playing empowering women. What is she? Jameth. She is all oh, Republic of the Islamic Republic of the Gambia. I didn't know that Gambia became Islamic. Gambia, wait. This is interesting. The Islamic Republic of Gambia. I didn't. This is news to me. I mean, I was in Gambia years ago. In fact, when they had to, <laughs> the, the the this was in like what 1992. The late '90s, I was at a I was at a, I was at a conference in in uh, in Senegal, and uh, I had my we were doing a, as usual these companies do a radio drama, and so I had my cast and a lot of them were from the Gambia, and uh, the, the 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 day we were supposed to do it there was a coup. The coup consisted of these cats going to the radio station and say we're in charge. That was the coup in in, in Gambia, and so all the people the, the guy that was there, George uh, uh, George. Uh, Christensen, who was the head of the radio station, he was in the play, you know, so they had to actually leave and go back to Gambia. They were like, Phew. so we had this whole other thing happen with them. But the, the month, a month later, I actually went to Gambia, and, uh, and these guys, man, they were young, but these guys, were, for example, the, the, these highways, they had all gotten these, like, uh, uh, land rovers, and they were just zooming out the highway. It's like, you could tell, they were like, whoa, and, you know, like, uh, in fact, the Gambia says, Tell you something about the gun or something. Anyway, so she's she's a she's a president. Was the first she leads the band female general your friends from up like and think, wow, powerful woman. I didn't know about that. You learn something new every day. Um, but one of the reasons why um, I like this reading this particular magazine is because you know you have so many uh, images of different kinds of, of, of black women. The United States, you know, uh, well, I didn't leave the United States out of articles. Oh, here's an interesting thing. The Other Room, uh, President uh, Buhari and the Legacy of Misogyny. Other Room, right? This cat. Uh, the Other Room is uh, was recently the most trending term on social media trends in Nigeria and among many other Africans. And for good reason, Together with the living room and the kitchen, it constitutes the only area where President Mohamedou um, Buhari thinks his wife and what she says belong. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> this is this is one of the problems with Africa. This is an old guy, okay? Africa, most places in Africa, is young people, female people, young, young people, and we are being, um, um, ruled or whatever you want to say, but these folks that are over 70, whatever they have, and their ideas are of a different epoch, as uh, Amakal Cabral would say. Anyway, so that's him and his wife, and, 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 and anyway, well, we will leave that alone. Uh, uh, you're an African woman, yes, this is, then they go to different categories, politics, uh, oh, Tuli uh, Mandesella, she, she was the uh, public projector in South Africa. Now that's the baddest woman on the continent. Was like, I don't know what she's doing now. I'm, I'm gonna leave that alone. Um, so all these all these African women uh, from different countries: DRC Congo, um, what's this, uh, Mauritius, uh, Ghana, uh, Namibia. 
Namibia's first female prime minister, her appointment in March 2016 came as little surprise in terms of merit. 2003, at the age of 36, the young economist was appointed finance minister, uh, taking office at a time when re revenues were down due to the downturn in the diamond and other mining sectors. Oh, that's, which one is her? I guess this is her right here, like that. Huh. That's good. Uh, okay, it's the end of the year. We're just taking our time with this. So don't, you know, don't, don't despair. But one of the things I noticed, I was um, on YouTube. There's a posting uh, from uh, Real Black. Uh, Real Black is R E E L B L A C K. It's a uh, it's a thing dedicated basically to, to things to cinema, to things of, of, of films and, and and of course black film. And they they, they put a lot of archives on it. They had a, a, an issue of um, an episode of Tony Brown's Journal, which was a popular or popular uh, uh, um, a public um, uh, what, 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 public what, the public broadcasting system came out at Channel 13 in New York, NET or something like that. And uh, so Tony Brown Jr. was sponsored by Pepsi Cola. Uh, and anyway, uh, they, um, they, they had this, this was like 1969, 1970, around there. They had this, probably they had a woman's, a woman's uh, program. It was like a, usually an hour, a little less than an hour. And so they went to archive and got this program. And it's an amazing thing. I did a, a um, in fact, I'll post the, the link. We should really, really check it out. You don't forget about it. It's really amazing. But one of the people on, on one of the panels was um, uh, Amina Baraka, uh, uh, um, 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 Amiri Baraka's wife, his new wife at the time, young, she's young, and she's the one that makes the most sense in this thing. It's an amazing kind of, let's break, break, break it up to certain uh, things like Novella Nelson, a great singer, she was singing, there was a dancer, a great dancer. Then there's this, there's this um, interview with, uh, with um, um, Aniki Giovanni interviewing Lena Horn. It's one of the best interviews. I mean, just as an interviewer and a subject, if you want to say it that way, goes to one of the best points. And Lena was like, wow, amazing. If nothing else, just see it for that thing. Uh, they also, um, the, uh, Roberta Flack sings this song at the end, you know, basically, you know, painters, you, you're always painting uh, um, um, uh, well, you know, white versions. Why don't you ever play, paint? Uh, Black Angels. It's a great song at, at, at the end there. And also somewhere in there, uh, Sister Song says that they go to Detroit. There's a thing called the uh, church called uh, the Lady of the Black Madonna for a Woman's Day thing. It's really good, but uh, Sonia Sanchez gives us poems. It's, it's, I love Sonia Sanchez. And she's like really good there. But back back to this issue of uh, the African woman. Uh, so they, 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 they're highlighting all these women that did stuff all through the year. Lady of Justice from Ghana. Ghana, man. Man, I have to really get to Ghana next year. I really have to go visit uh, Dr. James Small in Ghana, his, his, um, his place in Ghana. I got to do that. Um, Angola, so Santos from Angola. She needs new introductions. She's said to be Africa's richest woman. Oh, yeah, I know her. Oh, uh, that's uh, finance and banking, banking thing. They have all these, these folks. Tanzania, uh, Tanzania was at the plight of many widows in Africa will is well documented and makes for sad reading. When she lost her husband suddenly back in 1991, Dr. Uh, let's say, uh, vowed to do something about the social economic challenges she found herself in. And uh, from Tanzania. And uh, so she did something. This is her, I guess this is her right, right here, like that. So that's really good. So many people. I'm sorry, I have to go through this. I like, I, I, I liked, I really like this magazine a lot. Um, uh, folks from Botswana, sister from Botswana, uh, Morocco, Nigeria again, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, marrying many inspirational, uh, much many inspirational women in the field of philanthropy and education in Africa, and the name, uh, the city, uh, what's that? Masa Yiwa, Tanzania is there. Uh, Kenya, of course. Uh, uh, agriculture, mining, and architecture. Hmm. Ah. People from Ghana, like that. This, this is really science, technology, innovation. All these fine black women. I'm telling you, uh, here, Ellen uh, Get Getau. Um, uh, the 
program manager of the African Academy of Sciences, Gitabu uh, believes Africa must embrace new technology to improve diagnosis of common diseases and has played a key role in helping to establish technical platforms in Kenya to undertake internationally competitive research in disease prognosis and immunity. Wow. This is right here. Sister down there. Nice. I like this. So the thing is, uh, and then you have these uh, sisters from Nigeria again. It was just what a really nice natural here. It looks like a uh, author. The key, oh, she's a, this is now we're into the uh, media literature. Okay. You know we got some literature things here like that. Media literature, civil society activists. Oh, and Angela Kajo. Oh, that's why she's an activist. Uh, Rebecca Gum uh, uh from Tanzania again, a girl on fire saying no to child marriage. Mm, there you go. She's there like that. Arts and sports. Uh, oh, who's this one? Beyond Beauty and Song with lyrics like uh, they ain't no conquer. Oh, they aim to conquer our souls and we will keep on fighting. This lyrics to the song of uh, Sis from Mali. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Maja. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, this is really good too. Of course, we got Lapita and Yongo from Ken Kenya. Lapita's kind of interesting because um, she was born in Mexico, so she knows Spanish and, 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 and uh, Kenyan and, and the UK kind of thing. But Lapita's kind of interesting because if I had anything for her, what I would have her do, uh, hook up with um, that Spanish director, because he, 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 likes, uh, he, he likes black women, and uh, do, a, a, do a film in Spanish, you know, a, do a film in Spanish. I think she has a production com company in, uh, in, in, uh, in Kenya, so she's, you know, she doesn't have to be relying exactly on Hollywood all the time to big blockbusters and do, do, do something else. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, we have this. Sister uh, from South Africa, the legend, uh, icon, of course, capture a heart of arts, or the painter, uh, Malangu. Malangu, the sister, Esther Malangu. Uh, so she is, uh, she is there. Uh, uh, who else is around here? Oh, here, now we got the young people here uh, from Cape Verde. Uh, let's see, uh, Lucindia. Fosheka, well, you know, that Portuguese kind of thing. The youngest economic advisor in the office of the Prime Minister, uh, Foneseca, Foneca, or Foneca, Foneca, okay, is an inspiring young leader who sees social entrepreneurship as a means to reduce poverty and develop a continent. Oh, Sanford, Africa, MBA fellow. Uh, Yale, all that sort of stuff. So she's qualified, I guess, at least in the Western world. So you have all these creative, creative, beautiful people. So we shouldn't have any problem. And then, of course, this is a fashion magazine, so you have all this fat. You have a lot of fashion happening. It goes on through the fashion, like that. So it's uh, it's really good. I know there was one, there was one sister I saw at scene uh, in here. Uh, I think she was from Zambia. Let me find that sister. Because she is like, oh, here she is. Uh, Esther uh, Pari. Pari. P H I R I. Esther uh, Pari is, uh, Esther Pari has won the welterweight world boxing championship seven times, overcoming several hurdles and making sacrifices in order to become Zambia's and Africa's greatest female pugilist, you know, boxer. Oh, so that's that's amazing. Anyway, so you have all these these fashions happening here. I like fashion. Well, I have to like fashion. I like that. So it's a uh, it's a uh, it's really it's really a, a good a good magazine. And here, oh, here, um, it's a female football team. Uh, 
uh, women's football is fast gaining popularity. Last year's Women's uh, FIFA World Cup was the most watched, both in terms of spectators at the stadiums as well as on TV. Women's football has finally caught the public attention and is attracting global interest. For many, the sport is purer than the male counterpart. For one, the games are more open and the spirit in which the sport is played is healthier. There is less foul play and matches are often more exciting. See, women got it all, you know. So, I would say this for folks who, um, especially, I'm talking like, especially people in the states, all over the world, you know, find publications of, of, of your, that have your own interest at heart. Because this, this, this stuff they have with the, the standards of beauty, even though, like, like there's a lot of, uh, the hair is a lot of, a lot of stuff is just, you know, European dominated. But at least the sisters, you know, you've got a magazine where you got a lot of sisters doing that give you some inspiration, you know, because they need inspiration. Black women need inspiration because it's the times that we're in. Anyway, so that's the end of the year. I'm gonna give them I can I can take this home and give it to my wife. I look through it, I gotta look through it again. Anyway, that's it for me, from T from me, T from the past, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect about uh, uh, women.